Greetings programs, welcome back to the Game Grid. In this video I'm sharing five tips and tricks that I wish I knew when I first started playing Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. So if you're just starting out, these tips will really help you. I wanted to make this short and sharp, but there's an older longer video explaining these tips in more detail on my channel if you need it. Let's go! Tip number one, use your time in combat wisely. If you play the turn-based mode, the delay turn feature allows you to delay the turn of a character in combat until later in the round. You might not have noticed it, but it shows up as an hourglass button on the UI center bottom on the PC version. You can use it to react to what an enemy does, instead of guessing as to what they might do if your character acts before them. You can also use it to help coordinate actions between your own characters such as a priest applying buffs before attacking with your barbarian. If you have stuns or abilities that interrupt, these also might be useful to do to your enemy before another character attacks for maximum effect. For those who use the real time with pause mode, it's super important to use the AI settings to help govern what your characters will do when you're not directly instructing them. For instance, you can set behaviors on spellcasters to cast buffs and set themselves up for combat before controlling them directly for attack. Even just automating the use of second wind, which I mentioned later, or using a healing potion when near to death will be really useful in real time. Tip number two, empower. Empower points are used to supercharge your spells or abilities, or used to recover a certain number of your spells or abilities during an encounter. You can use them once per encounter. Click on Empower and then the spell you wish to supercharge, or click on Empower then your character portrait to recover some of your spells or abilities depending on class. Some abilities cannot be empowered, and not all abilities will be recovered if you use it on yourself. If you use empower tactically, you can front load your powerful abilities in difficult encounters, thus gaining the upper hand quickly instead of waiting and possibly opening up your party to being defeated. Tip number three, use interrupts. Interrupting enemies is vital in Deadfire, because some spells or abilities that they use need to be invoked over time, and usually these effects are very strong. If you can interrupt them, they'll lose that effect, and this could turn the tide of combat in your favour. Use crossbows which have an interrupt effect, spells that specifically interrupt, or abilities that knock an opponent prone, for example. Concentration protects one from interrupts, and as you progress through Deadfire, you'll find stronger enemies who are able to avoid being interrupted due to their higher concentration value. This is why it's important to have multiple characters who can interrupt so that you can overcome the enemy's concentration value. Conversely, it makes a lot of sense to stack concentration on your own spellcasters who need time to invoke powerful spells. Items, abilities, or spells can help with this. Tip number four, free actions. Again, if using turn-based mode, if a spell or ability is considered a free action, I'll prioritize these over other more extravagant choices on leveling or itemization. This is because free actions don't use action points in turn-based mode, and you can use any number of them once in each turn. Even if you use real-time with pause mode for the game, then I'll still prioritize abilities or spells that would be considered free actions because they are usually instant or very fast cast and still offer great utility. Some free action abilities are fantastic for getting into or out of combat, like charge on a fighter or escape or shadowing beyond on a rogue. Second Wind is also a great ability on any character with at least two points in athletics and one I highly recommend making available on all of your characters for emergencies. Above all, free actions represent a way to overcome time limitations in both modes and some free actions can feel particularly powerful so look out for them. Tip number five, use charms and summons. My final tip is what really helped me to complete Deadfire and to enjoy subsequent playthroughs, but is also a tip I take from game to game. I always like to make sure I try to gain numerical advantage over enemies if possible. Focus down individual enemies in combat so that your side can gain the upper hand. Once you outnumber your foes, this usually restricts their ability to act more significantly than you do on any turn until you win. For early combat, I use summon spells or abilities to bring extra combatants to the field, or I charm the enemy with cipher skills for example. Even fairly simple conjured allies can take hits which would normally hurt my main guys, shore up a choke point, distract and lure enemies into kill zones, or occasionally do some decent damage themselves. A useful source of summoning besides chanter skills or wizard spells, even on non-spellcasters, are the figurines you can collect and dish out to your frontline fighters. I'll always make sure my tank character can summon help if they need it in a pinch. Charmed enemies are fantastic because their friends will hurt them, and even if the charm wears off, the one or two turns with numerical advantage can be crucial. I love having at least one rogue, chanter or cipher in the party for this reason. So those were my top five tips for starting Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. I hope you find them helpful. What tips do you have for viewers? Drop them in the comments below and thanks for watching.